Good morning and welcome to the Daily Share where we pray the Word of God and bring it to life in our lives. Hebrews 4 verse 12. For the Word of God is alive and active, sharper than any double-edged sword. It penetrates even to dividing soul and spirit, joints and marrow. It judges the thoughts and attitudes of the heart. New Living Translation, for the word of God is alive and powerful. It is sharper than the sharpest two-edged sword, cutting between soul and spirit, between joint and marrow. It exposes our innermost thoughts and desires. So this is in response to one question that definitely came up um, as it relates to prayer and fasting. Seeing as we're preparing to go on prayer and fasting for the first seven days of the ne- of the of the month, um, and someone said, can you sort of share with us what to do, um, how to conduct ourselves during prayer and fasting? That's a really easy one. Um, prayer and fasting is a time to focus yourself on God. Um, while you may not be able to shut yourself out and be completely, um, you know, turned away from everyone and just focus on God, um, you know, you there is a way of turning your heart inwards into what into God, even though on the physical you are still doing everything you need to do you're still going to work you are still playing with your children you are still uh, you're doing whatever you you always do during the day you're cooking you're cleaning yes it is possible to cook while you are fasting it's absolutely possible uh, it is possible to say you're on daniel fast it's possible to eat your very simple fruits and vegetables and grains uh, for example brown rice for example and 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 salads and what have you it's very easy to do that while you are cooking everybody else a normal full meal with all the trimmings in it you know full chicken dinner with everything you can think of yeah it's very possible um because what tends to do is you turn your heart inward towards god what does that mean in your thoughts you are just constantly thinking about god this is what god wants us to do all the time anyway so prayer and fasting is like a training session for you on what you are meant to be doing every day so you're meant to be uh, reading the word of God, studying the word of God, listening to the word of God if possible. Personally, I prefer to play the audio Bible in the background and I do everything. Even at night while I'm sleeping, I'll play the audio Bible. Sometimes I play praise and worship music on, on the absolute minimum volume. Um, it just does wonders for me in terms of even when I wake up, you know, I wake up in that sort of spirit, in that mode of praise and worship, or I wake up in the word of God, basically. You may not realize you're not actively doing anything for this word of God to do anything to you, but it's doing a lot to you. Um, and also you start to realize that when you when you, when you say you're, you play the word of God in the background, you, you hear these stories, you hear whatever is happening. By the way, you can go on Google and type in any scripture and there's a there's a voice there's a voice uh, there's a speaker sign that shows that you can listen to the Bible instead of of for example if you want to listen to Psalm 23 just go on Google and type in Psalm 23 um, and I tend to use the Bible Gateway it's called Bible Gateway um, it's on Google go on that it'll show you a little speaker sign meaning you can listen to that to that to that chapter when it finishes then you can tell it to go on to the next chapter and so on and so forth but for some of you who've downloaded the Bible on your phones. Just go ahead and listen to it. Um, obviously, when the question is, then what do I do when I'm at work? It's simple. What the question is, what scripture are you going? Are you praying for? What are you praying for in that time? I know I shared in the last share that uh, we should be seeking the kingdom of God. By you even going on prayer and fasting in the name of Jesus Christ, you're already seeking His His kingdom, right? So you may have a, a different agenda. You may be saying, Father, I'm praying. Uh, for healing for myself or for healing for so and so in my family or I'm praying for you to deliver so and so there's this issue that has come up for my my love my loved one my husband my wife or whatever the scenario may be uh, you find a scripture that is that speaks to that situation um, re- I remember um, it, it, it's it's very common for me to dream about death basically and how do I know I dream about death uh, sometimes I might dream about um, uh, there's different ways of telling when there's a spirit of death. For example, dreaming about people who have passed away anyway, that's a clear sign that's the spirit of death. And what that what that means is it's the spirit of death trying to come in as in, in agreement with you. And when you find yourself interacting and and this for me the spirit of death likes to use uh, or used to like to use my grandmother because I was very close to my grandmother. She passed away. 
um, and we, I would hug her, we would laugh, we'd sit down and laugh. But actually, that's not my grandmother. The Bible says uh, those who have died, they, have, they are sleeping, they have no more portion on this earth. So no, that's not my grandmother coming to give me a message or to tell me to do something. No, that is a masquerading spirit. That's a pretending spirit uh, trying to come in agreement with me. And once I interact with it and sit down with it and eat with it, I'm coming in agreement with it. And what am I agreeing to? I'm agreeing to death. God forbid I reject that in Jesus name. I refuse. And so the reason I'm sharing this with you is, 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 is that for me, when I'm, when I'm fighting, when I'm praying against death, it doesn't have to be about me. It could be about anybody else uh, that maybe I've prayed, that I've dreamed about and dreamt that they're under attack or they're being pursued by the spirit of death. Um, the, my normal scripture to use is, um, the, the scripture is, oh, what does it say? We will not die, but live and proclaim the works of the Lord forevermore. It's in the book of Psalms somewhere. Uh, you'll have noticed that a lot of the time I share scriptures, I don't actually give specific references. That's because for me, it's easier to just learn the scripture. The references may come later, uh, but at the end of the day, those scriptures still work. Uh, it's not, it's not stating John 2 verse too that makes the, the, the you know the demon run away or that cuts these evil spirits away from my life no it's the statement of the word of god itself that is a cutting edge that is a sword that is a double that is sharper than a double-edged sword and so if you find that you're struggling to memorize the scriptures perfectly by stating the chapter the book the chapter and the verse don't worry just learn what the scripture says what does the scripture says my favorite scriptures the ones i always stand by that i proclaim you know over and over scriptures like i will not die but live and proclaim the works of the lord forevermore right i am the head and not the tail i will lend and not borrow uh, or sometimes i may even state it is written uh, no one whose eyes are set on you will ever be put to shame because sometimes the enemy tries to attack you and he tries to put it in your mind that oh, oh you you think you're, you're you think god will really do that for you you think you 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 will ever lend and not borrow forget it you know and the devil will try to embarrass you in your thoughts no one will say this to you even your thinking your brain will tell you and say do you really think you you have so much debt you think one day you'll ever ever own anything in your life do you think you'll ever own a, own a house you 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 that that's exactly that's the devil challenging you those thoughts are not you know those thoughts guys where do you think they come from because you don't want to think like that you don't choose to think like that those negative thoughts that come to you that remind you that you are nothing that remind you of all the horrible things and the bad decisions you took before you started uh, chasing god the, the enemy will remind you and say ah hmm. You think anyone will take you seriously? Look at you. Look at how you used to behave. Look at how, what you even used to, what you did with your life. What have you done with your life? Nothing. That's the enemy. That's the enemy seeing that, oh, this one, she's now growing her faith. She's really starting to trust in God. I, if, I, if I don't bring her down, she's going to be a problem. Don't ever underestimate. Those thoughts are not free thoughts, guys. They're not just random thoughts. That's the enemy injecting thoughts into your heart. If you don't have the word of God to fight it, you will, he will get you. So when I say no one whose eyes are set on you, who you, who you, God, God, it is written in your word that no one whose eyes are set on you will ever be put to shame. Why am I stating that word of God? Because I'm answering this devil who is speaking through my mind and reminding me that I'm useless and I'm nothing and I, I'll always be broke and I'll never amount to anything. I have to remind, Father, you said in your word that, those who no one whose eyes are set on you will ever be put to shame meaning this hope that i have this faith that i have that one day i will own this one day i will own a big house one day i will run a company one day i'll run my own business you'll not put me to shame you're not making me trust in shame in vain what everything i believe in will come to pass as long as i continue to keep my eyes on you i believe in you right anything you are believing for guys trust me when there are things in your life that you've never achieved the enemy is very quick to remind you that you'll never get them he loves to do that because every time you step into a new level in your life that's that's you proving god and the enemy doesn't want that why because when people start to see that look at this sister she really did that whole time she was saying she's waiting on god she's trusting in god she's believing in god look at her now it really worked right and when people see that again there's a verse in the bible that says many shall see and fear the lord and put their trust in him i always pray that and say father many shall see 
your fulfillment in my life and they will believe also even my enemies let i pray for my enemies the very ones who are giving me a hard time let them see your power in my life they shall see your power in my life they shall see you deliver me from all the bad things they are trying to do to me they shall see me uh, be, be compensated for all the bad things that happened to me all these years all the money i lost all the blessings i lost because of generational curses these very enemies who are bothering me they shall see they shall be witnesses that ah we knew this one she had nothing now look at her right and they said that will cause them to put their trust in you they shall see that every evil they're trying to do to me is not working and what will that cause them to do it will cause them to also want this power that is protecting me they'll say ah what is she doing let's see what she's doing so we can also try it i'm praying i'm using the word of god so they'll also begin to try the word of god so as you can hear, these are all conversations that are taking place by myself. I'm not talking to anyone. I don't argue with people. I don't, I'm talking to myself and uh, any demon that is challenging me. I'm talking to it using the word of God. Personally, I have nothing to say to any demon. But if I use the word of God, I know the word of God cuts them. That's what the scripture says. It says the word of God is alive and active. Even Jesus said these words that I speak, they are spirit and they are alive they are alive right they are life sorry that's what jesus said when you speak the word of god guys you are cutting these spirits some of these spirits i want you to imagine something that is really stuck on you imagine a snake that is stuck on you it has coiled itself around you speak the word of god you will start to chop that snake off into little pieces i'm telling you i've even had a dream where i was literally i dreamt of a snake or snakes a huge pile of snakes that had been chopped up into little pieces why because the word of god i had been using had chopped them up into little pieces and you'll start to see that the word of god you are using in your prayer or in your fasting period is working because that's when you have crazy dreams at night because those those spirits are responding to this word of God that you keep. All they'll be wondering and saying, "Well, the, all this time she was quiet. Now she's busy with the word of God. Who taught her this word? She needs to shut up. They'll try to shut you up. You may see strange things happen around your your house. Things will break. Please, brothers and sisters, do not be scared off." Do not give up. I made that mistake of giving up so many times. Sometimes my car wouldn't even start. Every time I go on prayer and fasting, I would see drama, drama, right? Even my car would not start. Sometimes even the toilet will break. Every time I go on prayer and fasting, even now, as I tell you right now, something will just stop working in the house. I don't care. I don't care. And I'll literally say, devil, I don't care. I don't care. I am going after my father and he's going to bless me whether you like it or not. That's got to be your attitude, guys. Thank you for listening. God bless you. Have a lovely day. Goodbye.